Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna use only our phone to create a full stack website. Yes, you are hearing it right. So we're gonna be just like using our phones and we're gonna code a whole website from start to finish. We're also gonna go like through the setup process of like how to set up probably like VS code on your phone, how to install it, how to work with it, setting up a project, cloning from Git repositories and doing all this kind of stuff. Of course, it's not gonna be as easy as you might think on, on an actual phone and we're gonna be using Android particularly, but it will be like good enough for us and if we just like find it a little bit harder to code using the mobile's keyboard and the little screen of mobile you know how it feels we have we have like ridiculously huge screens and that's what we should do but i mean if you find it a little bit uh, like you know just like not really good we can just plug in our our bluetooth keyboard maybe your uh, our mouse just to help us a little bit we're still gonna keep the the actual um mobile phone just floating around but we're still gonna be like doing it this way so without further ado guys let's go ahead and jump right into it so the first part of the video is gonna be setting up the actual server or the development environment we're gonna be working on in order to be able to develop a website or create a web application through our, our mobile device so this one is going to be actually installing VS Code on a web server. So later on, we can access VS Code through the, a website or through the URL or through the internet, just remotely through our mobile devices. And this is the GitHub page in here. So if you scroll a little bit down, you're going to find the guide and the requirements to run this. So it, it requires like one gig of RAM and two CPUs at least for this to run at a stable minimum level so you make sure to do that uh, we're going to be doing is actually running the script in here to install it we have a vps like a dedicated vps a custom completely custom vps we're going to be installing this on but there are other options that you can do too so if you for example try to go to like the deploy to code server in here you're going to find the different ways to deploy this and they all have like custom guides made into this and the guides in here are basically going to allow you to like do a one click to deploy for example for heroku there's a one click to deploy there's actually a couple stuff that allows you to do a one click to deploy so you can go ahead and do it so you need to copy this one and the other thing you want to make sure is actually to ssh into the server so here i'm already ssh into the server i already have access and everything so i have root access so all i need to do is go ahead and like control c uh, paste this one i'm good for this one so this one has been installed so if you take a look on it all you've got to do is actually run this in order to start code server and make sure it's running okay so running this and there you go so code server now is installed it runs and if you do go ahead and check out the status so system cdl and you do status of code server at user and make sure to use at a user because the installs per user not all the users are going to have vs code available and as you're here it's currently active and this one by default binds into port 8080 so if you take a look on that you're going to find port 8080 working for this after installing code server it's only going to be installed on the local host so you won't be able to access it from the internet thus we won't be able to access it through our mobile device so to make sure we're able to access it we're going to need to install a reverse proxy probably going to be using nginx here that's going to reverse proxy any request that goes into the server that is coming from on the internet on the public internet and we're going to like you know port forward it or just like reverse proxy it to the local code server so we can run and access vs code on our mobiles web browsers so we're going to do using let's encrypt of Ng nginx in here you can choose whatever guide you want but this one is going to be the best one for us so you need to first go ahead and do sudo update and install everything so let's go ahead and do this one right here so sudo update in here is going to update all the dependencies going to be needed it's going to install them also i'm going to need to copy this one to install sirbot nginx and the python sirbot both this sirbot and python 3 sirbot are going to be needed only for doing ssl using let's encrypt so we can self sign a certificate that we can use for ssl i'm not going to use ssl because i don't have a domain but if you do have a domain i highly recommend you go ahead and use ssl so our screws in here has been installed we're going to install that too this one everything is installed pretty good now the next thing you need to do is actually to go ahead and edit the configuration or basically make sure that the code server has this configuration for nginx reverse proxy to work so we also need to add the configuration for nginx to reverse proxy from the domain or whatever if you have an ip address 
and to port 8080 that code server is actually on. So we want to stop Apache on port 80 because they already use the same port. And so it's clear in here, if we check the status, it's already like inactive now. So as it stops, then we can start Nginx. So we can start on port 80 and we can list in for all those. It's clear see, Nginx started, it's currently active. Check out what port is being used uh, but waste process and Nginx is using port 80. Finally, we want to activate the config of Nginx by creating a symbolic link. So just copy paste this and you're good to go. The other one is actually for doing the SSL configuration if you have a domain. Now, if you go to the IP address, we're going to find VS code and start them working. Also need to change the password this. So head to the config YAML and you're going to find the password in here. Set it to something I did from one to zero. After that, we also need to restart code server for the changes to take effect. Now we're actually good to go and you can actually manage and do and edit anything you want, install extensions. You can change the, the theme in here. Maybe like you want to go and change the color theme. You can, you can do that like brother bot in here without any problems. But what we want to do right now is actually jump into our mobile device and see how we can use this VS code through our mobile device to develop a React and a web application or a fully made up website. So now we jumped into our phone and screw in here, we have access and we actually already access the IP address on our phone. So as soon as we access the IP address, we're going to be prompted uh, on this web page right here that just you know tells us you will not access code server, you need to input the password and make sure to enter the password that you changed on the config YAML file. When we did that, it's on our server. So if you're AWS, Google Cloud or anything, you can SSH quickly and you can grab that and you can edit the password. Okay. So easy in here, I'm going to do, this is my simple password. It's pretty easy. Uh, please nobody hacks my uh, machine in here. And there you go. So as soon as he enters VS Code, curious in here, you see pretty much you have VS Code and you can access VS Code. It looks so good on the phone. And it's so, so sweet actually to be able to do something like this. Screws in here already like I went and accessed a project, like I opened up a folder and everything. Uh, I put a folder in there so just you can use git clone or whatever. And you can SSH right from the terminal. So you don't need to use like a, a separate terminal to do so. You can use VS Code integrated terminal just to SSH and do all of that uh, right out of from the like VS Code uh, dashboard in here or, or the actual IDE. And screws in here, I already installed that. So you can do extensions. You can go ahead and install extensions uh, as you would regularly do. Maybe you want a GitHub, as you see there is GitHub working or Git, sorry, working and it's being tracking all the changes and everything. Uh, search, you want to search something? Yeah, hallelujah, you can do that. As you see, of course, because the screen size is so limited and since we have in here just a little bit of screen size on our phone, as you see in here. Um, so you probably like, it's not going to be the best experience to code on a phone, but we're still going to be trying to do this on a phone. And of course, we're going to be building the website using create react up and react and everything. It's going to be super duper simple website, but we try to like put it everything on a phone. So we see the experience and see the, um, you know, the final results and everything, how to open up ports and how to access the server and all this kind of stuff. So this should look amazing. So now we need to create a new project. So therefore we need to open the terminal and CD back to the root directory. So you can just, you know, imagine yourself using a normal SSH thing. So just CD back here and we can just do print our working directory. We find this as source of root and we can create React app. Sometimes the terminal is, is a little bit fuzzy and it, it can drown you crazy because, you know, it's a smaller screen, but most of the times we can use this and we can use MPX, create React app, give it a name, and this will start installing all the dependencies that we will need just super duper quickly for us to so just wait a couple of seconds. And there we go. We've got React Hub set up for us on the React Giphy projects. So good. Now let's jump and try to actually open up the new folder that has been created for us. So just select React Giphy and you go. So this will reload you the window from scratch. And in this particular case, we'll be just like, you know, ready to start working on our React application from scratch. And we can have everything that we would like to um, without any, any problems in here. So there you go. Good to go. So let's try to start the React server uh, or the development server. So I'm going to do yarn start. And this is the, the start script. Click enter. And this should hopefully start us the actual server on port listening on port 3000 by default from create react up. Uh, so there is this already running. 
Uh, that's basically because I already did run that. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run this. So it will be just exit that. So now to access this one particularly, what we need to do is actually go ahead and new tab. I'm gonna to go to the link I copied in here, uh, which is this one, but I'm gonna go to port 3000. And there you go. There you go. So we've got our React application. As you see, it's running and the development is running on VS Code all in our mobile without even touching our PC or something. It's it's crazy like how it goes with that computer just on your mobile and the React application is basically running. That's that's so good. So I'm gonna try to copy this example from Giphy and see how it does. This one is just gonna like use our custom API key of Giphy and probably just like render us some GIFs or GIFs or whatever you wanna actually, or how you spell them, uh, it doesn't matter, but we try to do this on our mobile. So I already installed this, we did the yarn add and everything in here, that's pretty good. Now let's go ahead and copy all of those. It's a little bit hard to actually view or do anything on that little screen, especially copying a huge block of text or block of code. So yeah, I, I was curious if I'm struggling just to copy that piece of code. So try to go back in here. Um, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna like create a new file for naming it giphy.js. That's gonna, it's gonna be the end, like the main rendering function that's gonna render all of that. So we paste all of this, we remove the TypeScript stuff. And we're gonna add a new component. So we're gonna name this Giphy Grid. That is basically gonna just gonna you know render the actual grid that is being used by the React DOM over there. So it's gonna be normal grid with a width of 800 columns and the actual fetch function. So uh, the fetch function is basically what you know just gonna be used for fetching from the Giphy's API. So this will be that just like you know wrapping up everything. Make sure to export the function properly. And we can just go in and comment the React DOM in here. So because you know we don't need it that anymore. Um, just simply as that. This is just a simple function. It's crazy. It's not very trivial. And yeah, make sure to put your API key in here. Please don't steal mine. I'm gonna delete that API key anyway. But so yeah, just go back to the application in here, the main app.js, completely get rid of everything, and like we can we can go ahead and use um, basically like what we want to render. It's crazy. Um, it's a little bit, sometimes it hangs around on the keyboard. So I found a little bit of difficulties just to get the keyboard working properly. And like it's crazy import or trying to delete something. Sometimes it eats characters as you type, but all good. So here I'm going to reload, swipe down, uh, wait a couple seconds and hallelujah. There you go. So it looks, it looks amazing. Just being able to do that that thing in here as you see it has everything worked out from Giphy's API it all worked out pretty good because it just like loads the the most recent Giphy's and the most kind of like famous nut for for today or something like the trending ones and it just like puts them on here and it works just like flawlessly and we did all of that just in our phones that's that's so amazing as curious you can refresh and you still get that particular same one so that is actually meaning that this is working with an api and everything it just works uh, as expected to be so i'm gonna try right now just like to plug in my keyboard in here it's a, it's a wireless keyboard and everything uh, so it works flawlessly in here and I'm going to try to like, you know, just do the Bluetooth and connect this to my phone and see how it goes, like trying a keyboard and, and trying to code in keyboard because it's so, so hard to do this, uh, like using the, the keyboard of, of the actual device or the phone and you can't see much of stuff and you can't type and it's very hard to type and just like fix errors and all this kind of stuff. It feels much better now to use the keyboard instead of the actual device's keyboard. So you can just like, you know, import the search and everything or all the dependencies we need to build our search on Giphy's application. And we can export a couple of components here. I'm gonna need the API key and everything. And here it uses basically the React context to do all of that. We're also gonna be rendering everything inside of the search grid. We're using the search bar and the suggestions of the currently trending suggestions that are, you know, like on trending on the Giphy's platform. And last but not least, we need just to use the context and pass all the needed parameters plus the width and the fetch gifs. Now, last but not least, we need to export our components and we need to make sure we import them and just render them. Now, as you clearly see in here, we got the Giphy and we got the actual search bar with the trending uh, searches or search terms in here. And of course, we got all the GIFs. So it looks absolutely amazing. So you can search anything in here. For example, you can do a cat. 
let me turn this keyboard into a bigger one. Uh, yeah, so as you see, cat, as you see, it just gives us that. Uh, you can see the trend in here, you can click on it, like the full moon and, and everything. Uh, maybe you want dogs, yes, you can do dogs. And yeah, I know this this application is not this like complicated, uh, you know, very complicated application or something, but you can actually build this on, a, on an actual mobile device. In my opinion, I guess the best way to use a mobile device if you want to code, and if you want to use VS Code the way or the same way as we did it, like right now and today is basically just to take a look on the code, maybe fix a little bit of stuff or maybe just double check and read the code to just like you're on the go or you're on the fly and you want to just like read what the code does and everything. So you want to maybe just go ahead and look at it and see what it does on VS Code. And of course you can have access to all the files and everything. Maybe you want to double check something in that particular case, but for actual coding and then just writing code and being productive, no, it won't work and just completely avoid this if you're looking to just, you know, go ahead and code in a mobile. The experience is so horrible and you can, if you want to just like get two lines of code, it's going to take you probably like 10 minutes to do that. And this is going crazy. So I spent too long just, you know, coding this, uh, probably just like looking at documentation, all this kind of stuff, but still it's completely worth it just to go through this project and actually do a Giphy and do all of that using VS Code and as well, we worked onto this, uh, working it with actual React and everything. So that was so amazing for me and such a good experience.